Welcome to the Jodie Bunting podcast, where today we're talking about 40 plus women's fitness with the one, the only, it's Kat, the PT, owner of Zestfit Derby, Zestfit Virtual, and a perimenopause expert. Welcome, Woo! Kat. Hi, now, Jodie. How are you? Thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm good. Really good. Now, before we get going, Kat, I really wanted to make you smile. I wanted to show you my Halloween outfit. <laughs> what? <laughs> Halloween. <laughs> now, I, it's, I, when I think of you, I just think of my Halloween outfit. For those of you who are listening <laughs> and can't see us, I'm wearing kind of a sequined cat mask with a little bit bow on it and I just think it's so you cat don't you think <laughs> yeah I need that in my life I need to teach some classes with that on <laughs> you do yes I'm cat this is better than a name badge it really is yeah it is it is <laughs> I just wanted to start with that to make you smile for real so me and you know each other we are supporters of our lovely Rachel Holmes who is a fitness presenter a fitness guru basically in Derby yeah uh, we had yeah. a lovely Christmas dinner together didn't we a couple of weeks ago yeah really nice to meet and bounce ideas around wasn't it and it's just you know it's just great for the fitness community of Derby to get together that's what it was like yeah. wasn't it? It's just yeah it is I mean we see each other or we know of each other but to actually meet and chat and not have any any clients knocking around, it's yes. just nice to be able to do that, drop the shoulders and, yeah, have a good conversation. Wonderful. So thank you for coming on to the podcast. And as we said, we're going to be talking today about everything about the 30 plus woman, 40 plus woman. Yeah. Basically. yeah. So as a fitness expert, tell us what is the best fitness? What should over 40 women be doing for fitness? Well, I think nowadays over 40 women should be looking at more weights. So more weight bearing exercises, pick up yeah. the dumbbells, dust them off, don't be scared of them, and maybe make their workout smaller. So that's so one that, tip really to is that hit? Out. Is that hit or is it more traditional strength training, do you think? I think more traditional strength training. We are of that generation, aren't we, Jodie, where we've hammered the cardio. Yeah, we're hammering sure are. the hips. <laughs> <laughs> we're now, this is music to everyone's ears, I think. We're now at a place where we need to think about longevity. Yeah. So that would mean looking after our joints, doing less of the bouncing around and doing more of the strength element so yeah picking up the steel and doing a little bit more strength work so with your clients in particularly because I'm sure you have them especially new ones that come in and think they're going on the treadmill they're going to yeah. you're going to make them run what are their what are their reactions like and how do you talk them around when they they are expecting a different thing than you say yeah it's quite refreshing really because Obviously, I've been doing fitness for oh, over 25 years. So I've done all of the, the Zumba, the old school aerobics, the step. And now I'm almost moving into this newer phase of over 40 training. So most of my clients are similar to me. They're my age and they are, they love it, actually. They're like, what, you're not going to make me do a burpee, a set of burpees, a mountain climber. We're not hammering the treadmill for like 40 minutes. So it takes a bit of, it takes a bit of convincing. But once you get, you know, once you sort of under, educate them, I guess, and then once they start understanding that being stronger empowers them, um, they're in. And just, you know, I love explaining the whole raising your metabolism to lose weight as well, because, again, a lot of people see cardio and weight loss going together as one and it's impossible to lose weight. So just explaining that scientific fact and turning them into a fat burning machine, I like to say to them. Yeah, yeah you know, that excites them. It does excite them. And also when we talk about we want that metabolic rate going around like a washing machine, don't we? We want it on yeah. spin cycle. So it feels like they're burning calories at rest, which is all part and parcel. Now, I'm not saying that we're not going to do any cardio within that week, but we must do more weight bearing and maybe limit the cardio a little bit. So maybe yeah. less hit 
but a little bit more strength, especially if we're looking at 45 plus. So if somebody is adamant they want to do cardio, for instance, if they are running a marathon or something like that, do you, do you say to them, no, I don't recommend you do running, especially if they're overweight, for instance? Oh, absolutely not. No, I mean, it's all about what that person wants and what that person enjoys. So there's no hard, fast rules with fitness. We know that as long as someone turns up and enjoys it. But if a goal is, let's say, I want to do the Derby 10K or I'm signed up to do the London Marathon, then, of course, we'll adapt the training yeah. um, as necessary. Um, but in the main, I really want women to fall in love with more weights as opposed to feeling like they've got to be in the gym for over an hour. Because the tradition is, unless you walk out of that gym feeling almost dead, sweating every you know like a wet t-shirt competition with yeah. sweat dripping all the way down which most yeah. instructors feel like when they leave the gym but the yeah. clients actually shouldn't be feeling like that when they leave should they we want our clients to leave the the gym in the class don't we and feel awesome um and want to come back and sometimes that's like the real hard hitting cardio class or sometimes it's something that's a little bit less um challenging so that they equally feel like, you know what, we're teaching you about the balance here, not yeah. about the, the punishment of exercise. Because it is about pushing your body to the boundary, but not of collapse, not where you yeah. actually do need to call 111 when you get home. <laughs> exactly. And where, you know, when we do that strength training, women, everyone's different, aren't they? Some women come so that they can switch off and they're stressed out. You know, they suffer from maybe high, they've got high levels of anxiety or depression, or maybe they've got a high powered job, you know, so everyone trains for a different reason. So we try and tailor that, I guess, to that individual, but in the main, it's getting a balance of everything. But at, at, at the, when all said and done, they've got to like it. They've got to enjoy yeah. it. Yeah. So now let's talk about nutrition, food, my favorite subject. Um, so what do you, what are, what are your general recommendations for the 40 plus woman? So I think, like I said, we cardio, we are of that diet culture, aren't we, generation? We have been through it all, Jodie. Yeah. We've done the special K, the Cambridge, the detox, the keto, <laughs> the juice diet. We've done everything, the Jane Fonda. And I think once we get to this age, we've really got to start looking after ourselves more from the inside. I know it's all about we want to look good and we want to we want to look great when you know we decide to put on that little black dress or that bikini or whatever it is that we want to look good in. But it's about feeling good inside and understanding that food is fuel as opposed to um, you know we're, we're eating rye beaters yeah. um, all day long. So it's about going back to common sense nutrition and looking at our plate and going, do you know what? That plate is the rainbow. We've got a bit of goodness on there. We've got greens. We've got all the rainbow on that plate rather than thinking that food is the enemy, I yeah. guess. Yeah. So it feels a little bit alien, doesn't it, for the 40 plus woman to go, hang on a minute. So I'm going to lose weight and not diet. Is this how this is working? <laughs> <laughs> but a lot of the time we're spinning so many plates, aren't we? We've got work, we've got kids, we've got careers, we've got family. So it's about going, OK, so what does your food look like right now? Well, I'm just grabbing a meal deal from Boots. OK, yeah. so let's look at what we can do that's common sense. So maybe a boiled egg at breakfast with some wholemeal toast. Maybe we have something nice at lunch. So it's about being a little bit more organized really and eating better. I think that's where I'm really trying to draw that 40 plus woman back to the drawing board and go, right, think about the basics. With, with a lot of my clients, I say, you know, step one, uh, when I know the sort of thing they're doing, is just to eat three meals a day. You know, it yeah. is just about stepping up from where you are now. It's not about eating avocados and smoked salmon for breakfast every day. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and not everyone is Instagram perfect, are they? With, <laughs> not you know, at all. What, 
<laughs> what they're eating day in, day out. We're, we're, we're so busy. So we're lucky if we do grab you know, a sandwich or a whatever it is that's super quick. So when you speak to all your clients, who is actually doing that benchmark fitness, you know, that textbook fitness um, nutrition? Yeah. Not many people. So if you go, okay, let's drink some more water, let's up our fruit and let's look at eating a little bit more protein. Okay, I think I can try that. Because <laughs> even then- bodybuilders... You know, bodybuilders, athletes, they have on season and off season. So they actually don't <laughs> eat like you think all year round, do they? No, no, they are. I mean, when you look at these guys, they are probably half the man when they go into competition. <laughs> <laughs> and then off season, they're hammering, you know, the junk yeah. food or whatever. But that that's their, their absolute discipline to do that. We just need to get it right, like you say, three meals a day and some more water. Yeah. And we feel like we're winning. <laughs> it is that simple, isn't it? Yeah. How do you tackle this this question when people do come from the diet culture and they are adamant they've got to have skimmed milk, they've got to have yeah. no sugar whatsoever, they can't have a treat day? You know, how do you do you do you give them the 80-20 rule or how do you wean them off this diet culture? Yeah, it's a tough one. I really try and not just give everyone the same. I try and look at them in a whole. So I might have a single mum who's not working and is so busy in the home, or I might have a lady who's, you know, HR director and doesn't get chance. So it it all depends on who I'm talking to. But in the main, yeah, that 80 20 rule where think about maybe having a bit of a drink Friday, Saturday, Sunday, yeah. no booze yeah. in the week, try and get Monday to Thursday as best as you can, you know, try and up the water, drop the diet Coke, drop the amount of caffeine. We never say, rest- we never put any restrictions on anything, Jody, because we know where that gets us. Yeah. You're that <laughs> on it and off it culture, which again is another, yeah. another issue altogether. So a lot of a lot of my women don't understand that, OK, you were allowing me to have fish and chips on a Friday night. It's like, well, yeah. yeah, if you've been great in the week, why the hell not? Life's for living, isn't it? You know, yeah. we're here to enjoy ourselves and just try and create that moderation. That that's the biggest challenge, I think, for a lot of women, because they want to get on the scales. They they feel comfortable following a format which could be a diet um, per se. So it's trying to empower them to say, well, you know what to do. You've just got to do it. Because <laughs> most of our women know what they've got to do. Yeah, it's just having that motivation to actually do yeah. it day in, day out, isn't it? And make it a routine. And we're there, aren't we? We're there to sort of nudge them a little bit and go, right, have you thought about this? What are you having for your lunch? Are you prepped? Are you organised? Have you done your food shop? You know, all them basics. So it's about, yeah, teaching them that. But at the moment, I'm going to talk quickly about intermittent fasting. Oh, yes. Tell been... us about I'm a fan. Tell, tell us. Yeah, there, the world. There's, there's so much research now, positive research for that 40 plus woman or man to do intermittent fasting. And that is the 16 8. So we're not we're not doing like, do you remember the 5 2? Is it the 5 2? Yeah, you... 5 2. <laughs> so it's not as drastic as that, but it's that. 16 8 window where you would fast for those 16 hours let's say from 8 p.m all the way through to the morning and then you just shorten that hunger window or that eating window yeah and that at the moment Davina McCall speaking really positively about it she's been in talks with a doctor Dr Tim Spector and I've started to do that myself and with a lot of my clients and we're getting brilliant results obviously only if you've got no medical conditions, et cetera. But that's, again, a great way to, um, yeah, restrict your calories, I guess, if you want to lose weight. But even for a diabetic, you know, after that initial hunger's gone, after you close your window, actually your, your body starts to balance itself and it actually thrives on detoxing itself overnight. So, yeah, said there's so many health benefits for intermittent fasting. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm a big fan, and you know, I love my food. So, it, and but I think my body and my metabolic rate has changed as I've got older. I'm going to be 47 next, 
I used to love breakfast, Jody. I used to really yeah. like look forward to whatever it was I'd have, you know, overnight oats or scrambled egg. Now I just don't have that hunger until 11, really. I've hammered some coffee. Yeah. <laughs> I've hammered the water. <laughs> and then that's when I'll start to go, well, you know what? I, yeah, I, I think I can do this 11 um, A. I I think I'm going to give it a go. And it keeps me, keeps me feeling energized and I, I feel good on it. And again, that all comes back to our diet culture. Breakfast is the best meal. La, la, la. Yeah. You know, it all comes back to that. People are just so convinced that on Monday yeah. morning for day one of their diet, they've got to have a good breakfast, don't they? When it's, it's, it's false. It's not true at all. Yeah. And it's about what works for you, isn't it? If you're like, you know what, you know, your hunger window, you know yeah. where you've got to manage. Okay. Is it 3, 3 p.m.? Is it 9 p.m.? What are them times where you know I need to get into the dairy milk? I need to yeah. have some piece of toast, whatever it is. What is that window? And trying to create them strategies around those hunger windows. And everyone's got a different hunger window. Have you ever done OMAD one meal a day? No. This is a one hour eating window. I did this during right. lockdown when I wasn't exercising at all. Right. Um, okay. And the, the thing that happened was it was like Christmas Day every day because you were looking <laughs> forward to your mood, your 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 one meal. You prepared yeah. it perfectly. You had something that you love. And actually, it was great for lockdown because, really, you know, you only had to cook one today as well. It was really fantastic. Well, and I guess it stops you. You know, my husband, he works from home a lot. He's walking to the fridge. He's walking to the fridge. Yeah. Walk into the fridge. So I guess it takes all that away, doesn't it? Yeah, you it's just so like, simple. That, that's it. Apart from that, I can't eat. Did you stick with it then, Jody? Um, no, when I started teaching again, I needed to be, yeah. I would need to have yeah. a bit more energy. But I think if you do have a sedentary job or a sedentary life, I actually think it's a great thing to do because then you've right. got obviously 23 hours every day burning your fat you know if you do have a lot of fat to lose I think it's a great option yeah okay right let's talk about lifestyle now so we've done diet we've done fitness you know what do you tell people to sleep do you tell them to go and meditate at the hot oh. yoga studio around the corner from you <laughs> yeah I mean if we can fit it in I mean this is the thing isn't it our age group we are so busy we're spinning all them plates so if you can do a little bit of everything <laughs> a lady of leisure then brilliant but it's not always the case so yeah sleep for us is just crucial isn't it I think I try and say to a lot of my women try and do that digital detox so get rid of this yeah at 9 p.m onwards so you can really start to wind down maybe have a nice Epsom salt bath and really put everything in place for a good night's sleep I chat to a lot of my ladies and they are really struggling with sleep. They wake up, you know, 2 p.m., 3 p.m., hot sweats, or their mind's racing and they just cannot get a real good deep sleep. And if you think about it, sleep deprivation, it knocks onto everything, doesn't it? You know, it'll, it'll make you want to crave the coffee, the crisps, the chocolate, anything that you know, oh, let me get it, get through the day. And you don't want to exercise. Coat. That's the worst thing. When you haven't had a yeah. good night's sleep, exercise You're is the worst snackered. thing. Yeah. Yeah. So it's trying to create that sleep hygiene. I think that's really key. And then what, what's happening a lot with a lot of my women is they're training early. So they're getting an early morning workout in. So we're looking at 6.30 a.m., 7.30 yeah. a.m. And that then seems to set them up for a really good day and hopefully a really good night's sleep. Because then we're not charged with adrenaline 6 p.m., 7 p.m. Doesn't always work for everyone. And some people can't bear the thought of getting out of bed yeah. early to train. <laughs> but I think if you shift the exercise too early, you're, you're really likely to get a good night's sleep. So sleep is key and fresh air. Let's get outside. Do a little it, bit more walking. It almost works the other way as well. When you have exercise, you sleep better. You know, it goes so hand in hand as well, it disrupting the other one. It really does. And when I, when a lot of women come and see me and they are, they've not exercised, you know, for a long time or 
and they're highly stressed job. You know, they've got a lot on their plate. And then you just start to unravel their lifestyle a little bit and put in some really good little rituals, you know, I like to call them. So, you know, even if it's just a couple of a litre of water a day, we're not asking for like massive changes, but those little rituals that are positive really knock on to everything else. You know, good yeah. night's sleep, a little bit of fresh air, 10,000 steps a day, all the stuff that we know and we talk about every day. Um, but it's amazing how many people just don't do that. Yeah. Right. Let's talk about if I asked most men out there, what should a menopausal, menopausal woman do? They'd say, oh, just get them to take HRT. They'll be fine. <laughs> is it right? Is the men is the men idea of this all right or not? <laughs> it it all depends on how somebody feels, doesn't it? How they feel about that, whether or not that's the line they want to go to, the line they want to go to or not. But again, go back to Davina McCall, and she is doing such positive work around HRT, you know, and banishing all those myths of you know the breast cancer that all was the scare back, you know, 10 years ago. Yeah. It is yeah. now one of those things that I want to really try and champion and talk about. And I'm just in the process of having my blood test so that I can start my HRT journey. And it is a battle, Jody. You go to the GP and, yeah. you know, you are maybe not taken seriously with certain symptoms, you know, whether that be joint ache, anxiety, sleep deprivation, it's endless, you know, the list is endless, but just to open up a conversation about what your options are, I think absolutely empowering for any woman. The biggest thing for me at the moment is brain fog. And, yeah. you know, as teachers, we have to have that patter, don't we? That But, but, but you get a bit like this when you're trying to tell them yeah. what to do. And I'm like, this, this is messing with my banter. <laughs> I promise I was funny before this uh, period menopause. <laughs> so, so I highly recommend going and having a chat with a GP. And if that's for you, then absolutely. But you might be able to manage it a different way by cutting back yeah. on, you know, junk food, alcohol, all those lifestyle changes might make a massive impact um, in your journey without HRT. Yeah, you know, so I'm, I'm definitely going to go and, and have that conversation and see. And I'm, I'm a fit individual, but I am suffering with symptoms, you know, like joint yeah. ache. You know, and I put that down to what I do for a living. And I think, hang on a minute. This, you know, I, I'm not doing burpees anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us about your studio in Derby. Do you just do classes or is it just personal training? Is it fitness? Is it diet? What is it? What can we do? Yeah, it, it, it encompasses all of that, really, because you know what it's like as a personal trainer. You, you're covering every subject. <laughs> Pretty much we do everything. <laughs> everything. <laughs> so that's what happens in that little room. <laughs> it's a bit of one-to-one. -one. It's a bit of group work. You know, I used to teach big classes, you know, with lots and lots of women in, but now I've really sort of um, downsized to a smaller, more bespoke setting um, to, yeah. To, and you I do a lot of filming as well. You in the community, well, didn't you, before? Yeah, so I used to teach all over Derby, Moorways, Alistair, and all in church halls and various places, and then eventually got my own studio um, and taught big classes in there. And then after the pandemic, I downsized to my smaller studio. So, yeah, yeah so that's small groups. And what so size still, classes do you do now? Um, I probably can get about 15 in a class. Great. So, but yeah, mornings 15, something like that. I think you'll agree as an instructor, when you're teaching a smaller class where you know everyone's name, it's just so much more fun and rewarding, isn't it? Oh, it really is. And, you know, Joni, I really absolutely agree with that. You know, I've taught classes with 90 women in there and now nine. And yeah. let's say those nine women, I know they're them. I know their injuries. I know what they're going through. I know what they're capable of. So you can really push them buttons. There's nowhere 
for these women to hide anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but it's such, and I think that's what's come out of um, post lockdown. The fitness community now is so strong and we create yeah. our own tribes, don't we, within our setups, within our businesses, where women feel, you know what, I'm in a like-minded community, I've got friends here, you know, we're respected as instructors and people feel safe with us, you know, and it, that's, that's why I get out of bed in the morning. But on the flip side of that, since lockdown, everybody's got an app, everybody's got a book, a plan, and it's just this standard plan, and they just want something personalised just for them. It, yeah. That's the other thing, it, isn't it? It's so true. I mean, you know, we, we need human connection, don't we? So yeah. even though, you know, I do a, online as a service as well, there's, there's still that huge amount of foot full that want this that human connection how are you how are the kids what are you having for tea tonight you know isn't it cold all them small talk conversations yeah. that just make the studio and our businesses tick because you know coming through the door women just want to feel part of something part of a tribe and that the other people are going through what they're going through you know that's that's the other human connection isn't it yeah, I love that, you know, and, you know, that's, that's what the big box gyms can't do, you know, yeah. they can't give that sort of personal touch that we, that we strive every day to do. Now, tell us also about MenoFit. This is something you run, isn't it? Yeah, so MenoFit is, a, is, you know, Rachel Holmes's qualification that we were so lucky to be involved in on the first one. And that is targeted for menopausal women so it's what we touched on earlier really Jody. so the common sense nutrition we take it right back to basics we teach women that they can train in 15 to 20 minutes max and that can be a nice simple cardio hit weighted workout without it being singing all dancing and we really focus on managing those symptoms in that setting so it's a real great way to empower women over 45 over 50 to feel like you know what i'm gaining weight i don't know why i nothing else has changed and it's about retraining the body and the mind to get them to try and think a little bit differently and is this a course or a weekly class how do you run it so i'm currently running this in a course so i'll do this as an online program and then yeah. towards next year, I'll probably look at putting on some one-to-one -one classes uh, for women to jump in face-to-face -face as well. Now, talking of online, you, you have this hope and this joy to bring Zest Fitness to the world, don't you? So this is your <laughs> new project, yes. project, Zest Fit Virtual. I've been on, I've had a quick sneak on the website it looks amazing. There's like, as oh. soon as you click on it, there's your face. You're like jumping around. The video starts. <laughs> so that was a baby born out, born out of lockdown, really. So yeah. we saw yeah. a, an opportunity to bring Zestfit into people's homes. And we thought, right, let, let's just see how this works. And then being mentored by Rachel throughout the whole of the lockdown, she was a massive champion of online fitness. So she really helped me with the fire in the belly for that. And we put the, we put the website together. And then I just started filming in the studio, all sorts of different workouts, you know, from hit to, to batter to old school aerobics. And it's, it's continued to steadily grow. Yeah. So throughout 2023, I really want to try and teach a lot of women that you can do both. You can do face-to-face. -face, and if you can't get to me three times a week, then you can maybe do an online session. So it's about trying to get everyone to understand there's a bit of everything there, whether it be a walk, an online session, or a face-to-face. -face. So yeah, and Zestfit Virtual is full of content. And back to your old days when you were teaching 90 people in a class, you know, those key people can re-engage and get to know you again as well, can't they, on a weekly basis? Yeah. So, sounds yeah. great, Kat. It really does. Oh, thank you. So to sum up our little chat then, what are your top three tips for the 40 plus women? 
Don't be so hard on yourself, girls. Take a moment to just go, you know what? I doesn't matter if I can't run like I did 10 years ago. It doesn't matter if you're not the same size or, you know, life is different. It doesn't matter. Just be grateful for where you are now and then try and just take baby steps. I find a lot of women are so hard on themselves, you know, and sometimes that just stops them in their tracks and stops them nudging forward a little bit um, when they're so, so capable of, um, you know, making some real positive changes. And it's not an uphill battle. Is yeah, it? we know we it, it's easy for us to say that. But, you know, I want to say to a lot of women who are listening, it really isn't an uphill battle. You know, maybe one 10 minute workout or one 10 minute chat with us really sparks a little bit of motivation. So, yeah, stop beating yourself up. And your other tips. Hydrate. Drink water. <laughs> I mean, I, I find it I'll do it now, just... okay, Kat, I'll do it. Yeah, come on. Chug, chug, chug. Cheers. <laughs> I think that's one of the easiest things. If any personal trainer would talk to you and give you one tip, it would just be to hydrate better. Yes. And I think, you know, the advantages of being hydrated, more energy, better skin, better teeth, better digestive tract, all of that, you know, and that's just through drinking more water it's not about going crazy and yes you'll be weeing like a racehorse to begin with <laughs> but it just stop quickly doesn't it yeah but just maybe up the water and pull back on the sugary stuff and your last tip i think i might i was thinking about this i think i'm gonna say sleep because yeah. sleep's up there probably with hydration so yeah don't beat yourself up drink more water and get a good night's sleep. Maybe put that in your little toolkit as a um, try to make a goal for 2023. Get a good night, six hours, six, seven hours. Now, talking of 2023, you've linked on very well nicely there, Kat, <laughs> because I wanted to ask your personal, what is your New Year's resolution for 2023, apart from drink, keep drinking the water? <laughs> Do you know, I don't, I actually, I, well, business goals, I've always got, you know, things that I'm fired up in the pipeline. I want to get into corporate and empower as many women I can in the workplace about what we spoke about, about yeah. getting rid of the diet culture and trying to understand that it's back to basic with nutrition and pushing that a little bit more. I need to be more organized, Jodie. My, I'm quite at hazard as a personality i don't believe this <laughs> you seem like you've got it together well i need to just be a little bit more structured in what i do because i get these ideas and then i run with it and then i leave this behind so i i feel like i need to have a little bit more structure in my own um my own organization to be Which honest my only little bit of advice would be over the years, I've always tried to do too much and just yeah. focusing on one or two things, which it sounds like you're doing with the online and obviously your, your in-house studio. I think yeah. this is probably going to really help you for the new year because you've got two big projects to work on and yeah. just try and limit it. That would be my... Yeah. Do you know, that's great advice. advice because, and that's the thing with having Rachel as a mentor. She gives you so many things to get your teeth into. Then you're like, hang on a minute, Rachel. I'm not even <laughs> hitting my own, my own little project. Stop giving me new stuff to talk about, <laughs> to do. <laughs> I don't know whether you heard, but on her podcast, I did tell her the truth. One of her fitness classes gave me enough chore choreography for a whole year. <laughs> That's the thing, isn't it? You know, she gives the, the great ideas and I'm like, right, I got to do that. I got to film that. I got to do that. So I've got to be a little bit more structured in my, my own goals and stick at it. I think yeah. that's what it is. Um, and yeah, maybe me, I need to eat a little bit better as well. I need to look at up in my protein and not being guilty of grab and go because yeah. I do do yeah. that a lot. I need to, because we're, we're juggling so many clients, aren't we? And so many things. 
that it's hard to eat in between clients or in between classes. So it's getting a little bit more organized with my food prep. You can do it. <laughs> Squeeze I it in between it. all this great work you're doing. It's fab. Oh. Right, Kat, thank you so much for joining today. It's been a real oh, pleasure. Thank you and for inviting me. Where can people get more details about Kat and virtual? So zestfitvirtual.com is the website. And obviously people can follow me on Facebook, Zestfit, or Instagram, ZestfitCat is my main handle on Instagram. And yeah, I aim to empower as many women in the next got it until i can't do it anymore jody <laughs> oh great cat right thank you for joining me we'll see you again soon bye for now Fab. bye, bye. <laughs> please remember to like give me a comment share with your friends and of course subscribe to my channel thank you